Back up. An impossible situation. That's how many see Tennessee's visit to Seattle this afternoon. Going deep downfield for Jones. He's got it! Tell me what I missed a couple times. Throw a line and I'll still come back from behind. I watch me shine. Yeah. Derek Henry roll up well. Just went Get the wind to sound. Roll the ground. This my moment now. I won't let it down. Play Make break. it count. Wilson with a deep drop. Make it Get in trouble. Big chase. Sack! Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Henry turns it up. Runs into Diggs. Runs into the end zone. Looking at the best to ever do it. Kick. Yeah! <laughs> yes! How about these Titans? Yes! The impossible situation possible. Tighten up, dog. That right there in the second half is our identity. Yes, sir. Believe in it, practice it, preach it, demand it out of each other. Tighten up! An overtime victory in Seattle. One of the best road wins in recent Titans memory. Welcome to the Mike Vrabel Show with the head coach. I'm Mike Keith. Exciting, heart stopping, come from behind. It had a little bit of everything. And if you're a Titans fan, wow. It had a lot of everything. It was, uh, it was a long day. Uh, proud of this football team. Traveling across the country, handling the environment in the way that they did. Uh, keeping drives going offensively, battling defensively. There were some mistakes in the first half, but you know, even one big one in the second half um, that, that we'll talk about. But we just kind of hung in there, never lost hope, and just did, did just enough there to get it to overtime and then be able to win it there at the end. One of the Mike Vrabel favorites is you got it from everywhere on the team. Offense, defense, special teams, everybody contributed. Yeah, I mean, and that's what we tell them after the game. You, you have to be... You know, everybody with a, with a jersey and helmet has to have made some plays to help us win, and that's what it is. And if you're the fifth wide receiver, that means you're busting your butt on special teams and you're doing something to help us create field position or do what Racy McMath did, go down there and help make a tackle with Nick Westbrook on the kickoff team uh, or being a gunner or doing something. Uh, and I felt like we, we got that, and so we can show those guys, you know, the role that everybody plays to help us win. All right, let's take a look at Mike Vrabel's six-pack right now, six of the best plays from the game. One of the keys for the Titans got pressure on Russell Wilson, and here in the second quarter, not only pressure, but a quarterback sack. Yeah, we tried to make him a little bit uncomfortable, and I thought we, we did that. I thought we were aggressive. I think you can see right here, you know, Jeff and Danico really do a nice job with a game inside. You're going to see, uh, you know, Danico coming in there, wrapping around, Jeff getting a, you know, pick, and, uh, they, they worked well together. They worked those two-man games together. You know, we had another one there late in the year, uh, in late late in the game. But obviously, you could see that Russell's uncomfortable. You know, trying to get the football out, and we got to do that more this week. Danico Autry, the former Colt, with a sack and a half in the game for the Titans. Then the deep ball, another new Titan, Julio Jones, getting in the act. Yep, you can see when we run the football, the play action gets set up. You know, and, and, it, and it allows for some single coverage down the field. Um, great ball by Ryan, got behind the safety, you know, good control there with the corner that was playing outside leverage. But you know, when, the, when the middle of the pocket is clean, Mike, we can do these things. We can get the ball downfield and, and we can hit some shots. And you know, I thought Julio came back and, and played great. He played great without the football in his hand and you know, did, did some nice things when we threw it to him as well. Ryan Tannehill throws a good deep ball too, Coach. Well, it, when he's clean, when you keep the middle of the pocket clean and he can step into it, there's a lot of quarterbacks can do that. Anthony Ferkser was not available to play, so bigger role for Michael Pruitt. Here's a nice catch he had during the course of the ball game, and then 15 tacked on at the end. Well, yeah, we asked these guys to do some blocking, and then you could see the check down was there, and Pru, you know, got to take care of the football. And then, you know, I guess he did just enough to draw the foul. You know, we'd like to not get into some of this other stuff and make sure that we just go back and celebrate with our teammates. 
you know, but th those underneath zones were there. Ryan found them, and you know, I think everybody did a nice job of, of making sure that they caught the ball, got north and south, got some positive yards. Three catches for 43 yards for Michael Pruitt. How about a little Derrick Henry? Let's go 60 yards for the gentleman who had 35 carries for 182 yards. Love well, to see this. Well, again, you know, a bread and butter run for us. Um, you know, you saw A.J. Brown there at the point of attack, half in a block, you know, Adams. And, and really, once that happened, it was him in the corner and he outran, the, you know, the safety. And, you know, there's a lot of things that go into this, but it's Derrick right there, A.J., you know, sealing, getting a block to get it started. Derrick not running sideways, jump cutting, getting north and south. You know, and then giving himself some room at the sidelines. That's the thing. When he made that cut, he still had a lot of room to outrun Diggs there to the end zone. And I thought that was a, you know, it's just what we've come to expect from Derrick Henry. We get to overtime. The Seahawks with the ball at their own 13, third down and 10, and the Titans come up with another sack. This is Ola Adaini. Well, you can see the pressure in the middle of the pocket, the push that we had. And again, it's creating third and long situations. Well executed. I thought it was a good call. Guys were playing fast. Collapsed the pocket, Ola wrapped around. You know, would love to try to get the football out there. Um, you know, they didn't feel at that point in time that that was a, that was a safety. Um, and so then again, we just had to win it, uh, you know, a different way. But that was a huge defensive series. So then Dixon, the punter for the Seahawks, standing nine and three quarters yards deep in the end zone, has to kick it out. Chester Rogers gets it back to the 39. You're able to run Derrick Henry to the 18. And here's Randy Bullock. There you go. You know, Randy's done this before. He's made kicks to win games in this league, and uh, this is no different. So it was a huge, uh, huge opportunity for him to go out there and, and help us win the game, and you know, well executed by everybody to get us in that situation. Titans score the last 17 of the game and win at Seattle. Seattle had been 52 and 0 when leading by 15 points in a game. Now they're 52 and 1 in that category as the Titans take one. We've got more coming up. The Titans Files are next. Stay with us for more of The Mike Vrabel Show. Julio Jones posted his 59th career 100-yard game at Seattle on Sunday in the Titans win over the Seahawks. So as we take a look at the Titans files and we profile Julio Jones, Amy Wells needed an expert to talk about this future Hall of Famer, and she found him right in the Titans' own wide receiver room. Hut. There we go. Rob Moore teaches because he could do. Moore is the Titans' wide receivers coach, and if anyone doubts his credentials, he can simply tell them to turn on the tape. Moore played wide receiver for a dozen years in the National Football League. The Jets took him in the first round of the 1990 Supplemental Draft, and he spent five years in Gotham before heading to Phoenix for seven years with the Cardinals. Moore caught over 600 passes for over 9,300 yards and 49 touchdowns. He was named to a pair of Pro Bowls and was once named All-Pro. Oh, and Rob Moore has coached wide receivers for a dozen years. So when we asked Rob Moore to talk about Julio Jones, we knew we found the very best person to discuss the seven-time Pro Bowl with. Julio Jones is a great athlete. He's got great length. Uh, phenom phenomenal at, at tracking the deep ball. He's got unbelievable range because of his length. Has long speed, extremely competitive, uh, a great teammate, and a future Hall of Famer. I think one of the characteristics that make him most unusual is his ability to go from speed to power. When you look at him, you watch him in the weight room, see, you see the weight that he throws around, and you see his ability to be able to go from being a nimble, fast, quick guy to all of a sudden being powerful and explosive is really incredible to watch. Players that, that try to defend them, you know, they have a, a dilemma. Do you get up there and you press them and then get overwhelmed by the power and the length of them? Do you play off where he can, you know, use his, his size and his, and his length as separation at the top of routes? You know, he, he can play bully ball, you know, he can, he can play the, you know, play that game where you want to play off me and give me space, you know, I can take advantage of that. You just kind of got to pick your poison, man. Which one do you, which one do you want to live and die with? And when I first saw him, I was just shocked at how long he was. When you look at his strides, you know, sometimes as coaches, we give guys steps and yards. Well, I mean, he's got to be a yardage guy because his steps are abnormal compared to other guys. 
Now here's my favorite Julio Jones stat. In his 10 plus years in the NFL, he has averaged 96 receiving yards per game. That's number one on the all time list. Calvin Johnson is number two on that same list, averaging 86 yards per game. And when you consider the 100 plus year history of the National Football League, that number is staggering. That's an incredible stat, and, and I, I did not know that. I wasn't aware of that, but really what that, what that tells you is his ability to, to be explosive, his ability to be able to, to catch and run with the football. Uh, everybody has a tendency to think that, you know, God has a, a you know, 90 yards or 100 yards, and there's a bunch of big plays in there in terms of deep throws. He's a guy that can take a slant for distance. You know, he's a guy that's going to make you tackle him. That's what's uh, so impressive about him is his size and his ability to, to uh, impose his will on people. I think the most underestimated part of the game is, is Julio has a, a really vast knowledge of the game and a good understanding of, of spacing. He really has a, a, a great understanding of, of the big picture philosophy of, of each play that you're, trying to, that you're trying to run. He understands how he fits in that puzzle. He understands, okay, this, we need him to do this so that this can work over here. Uh, and he's willing to do that. You know, some of these guys, if they're not getting the ball, they're, they're disinterested. He's a, he's a good team player. Time to get back in the division. The Titans playing an AFC South game at Nissan Stadium this Sunday against the Indianapolis Colts. Let's do some Nissan keys to victory on the Mike Vrabel show. How do you beat these Colts? Well, first, got to create those turnovers. You have to. You know, I mean, it's hard to play defense in this league without creating turnovers. You know, we, did, we, we won in Seattle with some great efforts and great individual efforts, especially on third down but we didn't create any turnovers. We, we have to turn the ball over. We have to give our offense a shorter field. Room to grow. Absolutely. Room to grow. The second key, let's take a look at this. We got to score in the red zone. Kick too many short field goals in the first half, right? Way, way too many field goals. You know, those were two things, our two keys there were things that we were good at last year. We turned the ball over, uh, we took care of it on offense, and we scored touchdowns in the red zone. We're too close. We got guys open, you know, get pressure on the quarterback. Just little things each and every time. And don't go to replay in the end zone, too. Well, hopefully not. <laughs> there you go. All right, the final key, physical special teams. Thought your special team Sunday outstanding overall. Well, overall. You know, I mean, I, it, I just need, you know, you're, we're, we're coming back home. We're in the division. Uh, I'm looking for a physical performance uh, from these guys to be physical, to, to set the tone uh, when we cover kicks. Uh, maybe we can protect our kickoff returner a little bit. And, uh, and see if we can improve there. All right, so those are the Nissan Keys. We jump from the Nissan Keys to a feature sponsored by Delta Dental. For Mike Vrabel, it's Guess the Titan. Guess the Grin. Oh, Guess this Titan. Mike Vrabel takes a look. Ah, all right. I so got, you got some a time to think about. I have no thought. Whatsoever. All right, we got to go to break, but you got time to think about it. When we come back, Mike Vrabel guesses the Titan, and we also show something from the Thursday night thriller at Nissan Stadium last week. And thank you for a job well done. The Mike Vrabel Show continues after this. Time for the Delta Dental guess the Titan. Mike Vrabel says he's got it. During the break, he says, I've got it. Do you have it? Yeah. That's Boston College's own Harold Landry. Oh, Boston College's own Harold Landry. Is that correct? Oh! Told you. One Look and at one. this. He's one, one and, and one. one. The get rally. Ba get back on track. Get back, just like the team. Back on track. Harold Landry led you in tackles in the game at Seattle. A pure effort. Pure effort. I mean, he he ran on chase the football, and, uh, you know, that. For a guy that, you know, I mean, everybody wants to, to be uh, a pass rusher, which he is, he does a lot of other things. You know, he's setting the edge, he's chasing, he's on the ball, he's off the ball. You know, he, that play that him and Bayard had on third down, I'm telling you, was a huge play in this football game. They both broke, they converged, they tackled a large wide receiver short of the first down, allowed us to go out there, get them to fall start on fourth and one. They punted, and, and there we go. So. 
just telling you, that, that was a great play by Harold and Kevin, and, and Harold chased around and made a, a lot of great plays. Speaking of great, what an incredible night it was last Thursday at Nissan Stadium when the Titans welcomed Waverly High School and thousands of Waverly fans, along with White House High School and thousands of White House fans, for a special high school football game to do more than just decide the better of the two teams. Here's a look at last Thursday. By the time the rain had stopped falling on August 21st, Humphreys County had taken on as much as 17 inches of rain. This rain fell in just hours, and the crushing impact that all of the water had on Waverly, McEwen, and Hurricane Mills was heartbreaking. The Tigers lost everything in the flooding. Their locker room, their gear, their home field. And yet, Waverly has found a way to start this football season 3-0. and Tonight, the Waverly Tigers get another boost from the Tennessee Titans. Welcome to our stadium. Welcome to your stadium tonight. I can't tell you how much respect that I have uh, for you guys here tonight. You guys have overcome a ton in the last month. Shows your character, shows your will, shows your spirit, shows your dedication to the team, dedication to your community. I don't know you, but I'm proud of you. When we hear about things in, in our community, in our neighborhoods, um, we, we want to help in tangible ways, and we are just honored to be able to, to provide this, this escape tonight, and uh, hopefully we raise some money that will help some of those families get back on their feet. It is really a, a magical feeling in the building tonight. It was extremely humbling. All this was their idea. You know, We didn't reach out to them, they reached out to us, and they wanted to help, and it, they showed their generosity. and. You know, just a way to give back. Even though, you know, we're not directly tied to Nashville or this area, we're close enough and they wanted to give back and they've done an amazing job. To sit back and watch all the help from everyone around them, from my member schools, you know, all the way up to the Tennessee Titans, it's been amazing. We get a, a message, a text message from Mike Keith and all of us are on a text chain. And he says, hey, we've got a chance to do something really cool that could help and it's gonna depend on a lot of things. But if it falls into place, are you in? And we were like, okay, what is it? And they're like, look, Waverly's been displaced. Uh, the Titans are going to offer them Nissan Stadium. They're going to play White House. It'll be a Thursday night, September the 16th. And we're like, immediately all in, 100%. For one night only, Titans Radio becomes Tigers Radio. On the right side, broken tackle, end zone, Bryce Stanfield, touchdown, Tigers! Third down and nine, Lucas in motion. Blackburn running to the right, here he goes again. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 5, end zone. No flags on the field. Touchdown, Blue Devils, 67 yards. McAfee gets the handoff running left. He's got a hole to the 40. He bounces it outside to the 50, to the 40, to the 30, to the 20, to the 10, to the 5, to the end zone. He's done it again. Dooley, looking, firing deep down the middle, caught, touchdown, Stanfield. <laughs> I'm telling you what, what a bullet, what a bullet, what a high school football game. I don't know how to rebuild someone's house that's had blood damage. I'm not a plumber, I'm not an electrician, but we can do a broadcast of, of their game. We can lend our time and talents that way. And, and raise awareness to this thing. I think it's a great touch. I think it's really a way to reach out to them and tell them we've got your back in every way that we can. You know, hopefully, you know, two teams will come out of here having a great time, a great experience, and we can raise a lot of money for Humphreys County and Waverly and the flood relief efforts. That was a great high school football game. What an effort, what a night, and what a night to remind all of us that Waverly is a community of battlers and Humphreys County needs our help. TennesseeTitans.com slash donate to Waverly. A Waverly story certainly gets you if you want to contribute to the United Way of Humphreys County. Make sure and go to TennesseeTitans.com slash donate to Waverly. Coming up this Sunday, the Tennessee Titans will take on the Indianapolis Colts at Nissan Stadium. 
will kick it off shortly after noon. You can hear our Titans radio coverage beginning at 11 a.m. And that's Titans Countdown with Rhett Bryan and Amy Wells. We look forward to having you join us for that. A lot of special things about this weekend, including the Oilers weekend as we salute Bum Phillips, who goes into the Titans Ring of Honor. Again, our kickoff Sunday just afternoon at Nissan Stadium. We hope you'll join us. For Mike Vrabel, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us on the Mike Vrabel Show.